This maple tree is absolutely stunning. I don't think I've seen a maple tree growing this large before. It must be 200 years old. I'm gonna walk around this tree to try to give you a sense of its size. The camera doesn't really do it justice. It's got five separate trunks, but one shared root system. So the thing about these islands on the Susquehanna River is that they flood periodically. And because they flood periodically, no one's ever built anything on here. And they kind of just let the trees do what they will. And the trees can clearly survive the floods. What that basically means is that despite all of this knotweed, I am exploring an old growth forest. And that's a very rare thing to explore in America, especially on the East Coast. This island is scattered with ancient trees like this, and they literally hold the ground together as the river tries to flow it away. Here is another truly gigantic maple tree growing right at the water's edge. Its root system is incredible. It's not too difficult to imagine that just a short while ago, these roots were digging into land and some grand storm swept the land away into the river. And it's also easy to imagine what would have happened to the land had this tree not been here. If you look right there, the whole thing is caved away. But where this tree is, it's sort of a, a bastion of the island. And it keeps this part of the island secure against the river. So Japanese knotweed has not been in the United States for very long. I don't know its date of arrival, but it can't be more than 200 years ago, probably less than 100 years ago. And so you can imagine what this island would have looked like before the knotweed was here. So instead of all of those white flowers way in the background, the entire island where there wasn't trees would have been covered with goldenrod like this. I did it! I made a trail from one end of the island directly to the other. It took me like three hours, but it'll probably take me only about 10 minutes to walk back now. I think the existence of this island says quite a lot. You know, Binghamton is not a small place. There's 200,000 people here, and yet this island is completely untouched, separated by a moat of water. <laughs> but it's totally accessible if you know what you're looking for. The wildlife on this island is just so incredible and lush and resilient. There's evidence everywhere of flood after flood and yet life keeps on going. I find it really comforting to know that even in the middle of a river, in the middle of a city, trees still manage to grow. Thanks for coming with me as I explore this island. This won't be the last you see of it, I promise. If you want to see more, click the subscribe button over here and I'll talk to you again soon. All right, bye-bye. You can do it, come on. Yeah, there you go. Oh, hello. What are you doing here? I guess you're doing the same thing that I'm doing, huh? Being alive? Yeah, that's what we're doing.